Hello, everyone. My name is Laura Apisical, and I'm the director of the USC Dornsife Admission and Student Success Office. We're here today to talk about the pre-health experience at USC. I have here with me today a few staff members from our office. Um, I'm going to ask them to turn on their cameras and give a quick wave. Hello, everyone. Um, when we open up the Q&A a little later in the program, you may see some of our staff members answer your questions. So I wanted you to be sure to know that they're going to be hovering in the background of this program. Thanks so much, everyone. Pre-health is an umbrella term that we use here at USC to describe students interested in a wide range of health professional fields, including medicine, pharmacy, dentistry, physical therapy, physician's assistants, and others. What health professional field are you hoping to see yourself in? I'm going to launch a quick poll here. And if you could take a minute just to kind of let us know what you're thinking about doing right now. Again, this doesn't lock you into anything, just kind of wondering um, who among our audience, I guess, has some ideas as to what health professional field they may be interested in going into. Great, it looks like most of you have gotten a chance to go ahead and answer. Great, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll here and share the results. As you can see here, while most of you did indicate that you're interested in going into medicine, I will say that our, um, please, rest, please be rest assured that our pre-health academic advisors also work with students who are interested in attending graduate schools other than medical school. So it doesn't matter if you change your mind, if you think about other different paths, when we talk about health professional fields, you will be well advised when you get to USC. Pre-health is a pre-professional emphasis at USC, meaning that it's not a major or a minor. This means that any student of any major can declare themselves pre-health. Although you're certainly welcome to apply to USC as a biological sciences or a human biology major, if that's where your interests lie, you don't necessarily have to. By declaring a pre-professional emphasis in pre-health, you'll be able to work with our pre-health academic advisors to ensure that you'll receive guidance and advice on the courses and activities you should engage in to prepare for a health professional school, regardless of the major you select. The common application includes a space for you to indicate a pre-health emphasis on your admission application if you would like. It helps us to better understand your current goals and ambitions as we review your application. And don't worry, if you change your mind later on and switch your area of pre-health focus from say medicine to dentistry, or if you decide to leave the pre-health path completely, that's okay. While academic advisors provide ongoing guidance to students, we also have other staff members and peers who provide support in formal ways, such as via our supplemental instruction program and informal ways, such as mentorship through student organizations. I would say that our USC community is centered on support to students and that the pre-health community is a particularly tight-knit one here at USC. We have some amazing students who are part of that pre-health community who are here today to answer your questions and provide you with insight and advice. I'd like to have them turn on their cameras now and introduce themselves briefly. And as they're doing so, I'd like to mention that we will have an opportunity to, for you to ask questions of our panelists a little later in the program. When we're ready for your questions, we'll ask you to submit them via the Q&A box on the bottom of your screen and not the chat box. So we have our three students here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with Ariana. Hi everyone, um, I hope you can all hear me okay. My name is Ariana and I'm a human bio major and healthcare studies minor. I'm in my last year at USC and I'm from around the Pasadena area here in Southern California. Um, at USC, I work as a general chemistry supplemental instruction leader, which we can explain more for, further down the line. Um, I'm a Helene, which is a spirit and service organization. I also like to lead backpacking trips for USC students on campus. Um, I'm in a, involved in a few different volunteering organizations and I do addiction science research. And I just got back from a study abroad semester in the Netherlands. Great, Dominic. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Dominic. I am currently a junior here at USC. Uh, I'm from Whittier, California, so not too far, closer to OC. I'm studying environmental science and health and doing a progressive degree program in global medicine, which means at the end of my time, 
all have my match my master's and my bachelor's degree which is like a super amazing opportunity i am pre-med and on campus i'm involved in aed which is our pre-health or our pre-med honor society lsm latino students in medicine we basically do a lot of work to support our pre-health latinx community here and i'm involved in like various environmental health research as well great and last but not least tomas Hi everyone. Um, as my name was just said, uh, my name is Tomas del Cabo Manea. Uh, I grew up both in uh, Western Connecticut and Lima, Peru. I'm a second year and I'm majoring in computational neuroscience with a minor in biotech. Um, my pre-health emphasis is just pre-med and some of the things I do on campus are uh, I'm a trial coordinator for uh, Dr. Armstrong's dermatology lab and then I also do research there. I serve as the president of Cowlings and Ilium Honors College Residential Hall and I also just recently got accepted into a fellowship for environmental health matters at Keck's Environmental Health Center. And then lastly, I'm starting a bilingual medical literacy magazine on campus. Great, thank you all so much. Um, so now that you know a little bit about our panelists, I'm actually going to start us off with a few questions for each of our panelists. Um, since we want to be sure to answer your questions as well, please feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A box. We will try our best to answer as many questions as we can in the time that we have today, but I'm going to go ahead and start off with just a few so that you can hear more about our students and their experiences. So I'm going to actually ask all three of you to answer this one. Why did each of you choose your majors? You know, you have very different major focuses, and, and so I'd like to each, each, each of you to talk about why you chose the majors that you did and how your classroom experiences have been relevant relevant to your pre-health goals? Um, so I, coming into university, I knew that I was very, very interested in sports medicine and exercise science and human biology offers four tracks at USC. Um, I am so sorry, I cannot name all four off the top of my head. I know one of them, um, I think focuses more on nutrition and um, like chronic illnesses. Another is more like evolutionary biology based. And then there's an applied physiology track, which is the one that I wanted to do. So it allowed me to take classes such as biomechanics, physiology, exercise science, things like that. Um, so it was very aligned with the interests that I knew that I had coming in. Um, so I guess I'll go because I think a lot of people think that environmental science and health is like super far removed from pre-health like in general. I personally started as neuroscience and didn't really feel that deep of a connection with the research and the specific the major specific classes that I was going to take. And I've always like grown up with an inclination for nature. Like I see us as a part of the environment and think that that's something that I'm personally very passionate about. So I wanted to pursue that as like a perspective professional interest during my time in undergrad even though I knew that like medical school was kind of the ultimate goal that I was going for. And my major environmental science and health is kind of, I think it's an amazing interdisciplinary way for you to see the convergence of those two fields, like learning about environmental science as well as how that impacts health because those problems are just becoming very, very pertinent to kind of like everything that we're dealing with today. And I feel like in the classroom, especially in a lot of my environmental science classes, we deal with a lot of real world problems and like working with large numbers with sustainability, resource management. And so I feel like going into the health field with a good like foundational knowledge about things like that is really, really important for just like as a basis for working in, in the health field and like trying to help those at-risk communities especially with environmental problems. And um, so I chose a computational neuroscience. I first came in as neuroscience and philosophy, which are very two distinctive and yet interdisciplinary um, topics. But I definitely wanted to pursue that idea of a truly liberal arts education. So in pursuing both computational neuroscience and then biotech's my minor, I'm truly able to get into three different schools all at once because 
comp neuro is based within Dornsife, but you take classes in Viterbi, for instance, which is the School of Engineering. And then for my minor, biotech, it's a collaboration with Marshall Business School. So it's Dornsife, Marshall, and then Dornsife, Viterbi. So uh, within the umbrella of Dornsife, I was really able to venture out into all these different categories while still pursue my interest for medicine as a whole, but then redefine that and scramble that up and, you know, just have fun with it. Sounds great. Thank you so much. You know, all three of you have gotten involved in research. So can you tell us about your research experiences a little bit more in detail and how you found those opportunities? So I'm an undergraduate research assistant for the Health, Emotion, and Addiction Laboratory at USC. Um, it's at the Health Science Campus. And I found this amazing position during the COVID pandemic when everything was shut down. And I thought that I would have absolutely no research experience under my belts because it was very hard to um, communicate with people and even find anything that could be open. But um, USC as a whole has this great website. Um, where it essentially posts careers, whether it's within USD or outside of USC, um, a bunch of job postings or volunteer internship postings are posted there. So I kept reading those and I kept coming across research positions and this was the one that I was interested in. Um, so that is how USC helped me with finding my research position. And um, in my research position, I'm a statistical analysis co-lead and I work with a lot of really cool and supportive adults. Um, we do a lot of addiction science um, research in the high schools across Southern California um, so that we can understand um, their mental health, if there are um, diversity uh, disparities across Southern California, which of course there are, um, so that then we can make conclusions upon those and try to you know, conduct initiatives to better that. So my research is actually not la um, wet lab based. I'm not pipetting anything, um, but I am helping, you know, analyze uh, the population and seeing what we could do about it. So I really enjoy what I do. I am involved with the Chotsi Lab for trans translational research on environmental health, which is a lot of fancy words for basically literature review on very specific topics on a lot of very pressing like environmental issues. So I study about like organic pollutants and how that affects reproductive health in men and women. Um, it's a lot of article reading. I'm also a dry lab person, so I'm not wearing a lab coat or doing anything like that, but I do feel like I'm on very much like the forefront of science, learning about very new like studies that are being published very recently. And I found this position literally doing like a deep dive on the Keck School of Medicine's like website about like what research labs they have. I found the email for uh, Dr. Lita Chotzi. She's like the, the head of the lab. And I sent her an email. She forwarded me to one of her PhD students. And that's how I got involved with the team. Actually, funny, funnily enough, I also was accepted to Environmental Health Matters. Don't want to say, so yeah. <laughs> so, but, and that was like very heavily advertised through like from my advisor and from a lot of um, people at Keck. So I was able to apply through there. And then I also do cult cultural anthropology research with um, uh, one of my professors, which is totally not health related at all, but it, um, we analyze how race can be dealt with and is constructed in theater and performance art. So we talk to a lot of dramaturgs, playwrights, things like that. So I help with research, analyzing, podcast editing, things like that, which is a personal passion of mine. And <laughs> I worked with that. I had a class with that professor. So when she was looking for research assistants, I applied and I think that's like a super fun little passion project on the side for myself as well. Um, so I, I, I am a bit more of a wet lab person. So I definitely like putting on the lab coat and getting a little bit dirty. Uh, so I started the trial coordinator position actually um, utilizing USC Connect, which is a job platform that USC has. So I was essentially just looking for paid research jobs and I applied to a bunch and it's really easy. They streamline the process. You quite literally look up research and then it just comes up. And then you also, uh, one of the ways I got the environmental health matters, um, 
program was also just through going on the Keck website and you quite literally just click on research and then you go through labs that you like and sometimes you'll put certain like categorizers just so you can filter out certain things. Um, so as a trial coordinator, I definitely like it because uh, I'm able to just interact with patients uh, that way. And then I also do research with one of the fellows. So it's a bit more wet lab stuff because it is a clinical dermatology lab. So sometimes I'll stain certain things, I'll prep certain things. Um, it isn't as intensive because I myself cannot deal with patients. But it's definitely good experience to have just being in the lab and being in the group and solidifying a relationship with someone that is a doctor. And then on top of that, actually, this past summer, I did not do any medical research. I did uh, research on uh, employment opportunities in the disability sector, and I was a project lead on that. And so I highlight that you really can do research in anything. I, you can find it in the humanities or in social sciences and still find your home in medicine. Like there will always be those opportunities. If anything, they, uh, they as in Dorn's I've definitely pushes you to explore because for instance, like thematic option, I'm able to explore a bunch of humanities opportunities. Um, and then tie it back to medicine and how that impacts the environment. So, yeah. yeah, definitely, because really at its core, research is really just having a question and trying to find an answer to it in a sense. And so it's so amazing to hear about all of the really different types of research that all of you have been able to get involved in. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is the fact that Dornsife also has research opportunities within um, many um, labs on campus where undergraduate students can access opportunities to work with for example, the Brain and Creativity Institute and the Bridging Undergraduate Science Program and so many other ways in which undergrads, right, are able to get involved not only in wet lab, but also dry, you know, dry lab research in a sense. And so this is amazing. So, so great. Um, I wanted to move on to another topic because health professions are really at their core helping professions. And so with that in mind, could you talk about a community service activity outside the classroom that has been particularly meaningful for you? Yeah, so um, again, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and me trying to find ways that I could contribute to the community around me, um, USC has a crazy amount of creative people. So this one student um, started this organization from scratch. She is from Peru and the organization is called Spanglish. And through Spanglish, we teach um, these little Peruvian kids how to speak English. Um, so it is a community of bilingual speakers and it is just so amazing because you can either choose to continue with your student throughout the bimesters. Um, I've been with them for two years and I've had a few different students. And um, so you can really get to know your student and it's all virtual of course, because they live in Peru. Um, but every single day, they're so excited to see you. They come on and they're like, hello miss, like, how are you? And um, um, I absolutely love it. It was just such a beautiful opportunity that was just created single-handedly by this one USC student who it's literally expanded to like so many universities across the country. It's absolutely, it blows my mind. Um, so I love this org and it makes me very happy. Um, the person that she's talking about is in the org that I'm going to talk about. So <laughs> it's just like cute little connections being made everywhere. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm a part of Latino Students in Medicine. And recently we had, we partnered with Vida Mobile Clinic, which is run by two Latina PAs in the San Fernando Valley. And they had a mobile clinic. It was like a community health fair. And we got to work with um, these optometrists. And they basically had a mobile clinic in which you serve the uninsured individuals they can come and we do we did eye screenings and then we actually got to see like how the lenses for glasses are cut and made and then you literally get to pick out the lens after the eye screening for the like the correct prescription and then you give it to the people they cut it and then you get to hand it to the people that are literally coming up and filling out that information and like need those glasses and to me I think 
the reason that I want to pursue medicine and go into these fields is like to connect with these people, these like in my own community where I've come from, I grew up around LA. So especially the Latinx population, those at-risk individuals. And so I feel like this was an amazing opportunity just to be able to interact with those people, get to hear their stories, like what brought them, like why they need these classes, what has like brought them to this point and how, and honestly, they're all so grateful for the opportunity to get the glasses, get the eye screenings. And especially because it's literally at no cost to them. Um, I think I'm frozen, but you can still hear me. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was a really amazing opportunity and we have like made that connection with them. So we'll continue to work at their mobile clinics for various screenings too, for like blood pressure, pre-diabetes, things like that as well. Um, I have been, uh, working as, a uh, within the organization scholars, leading scholars. So it pairs, uh, individual or certain students, uh, with, uh, peop uh, students from like the local high schools in the area. And, uh, I definitely received a lot of help in my college, uh, journey specifically through certain programs that aim to uplift underserved communities. So I definitely want to just give back to said programs and I've been reviewing essays nonstop for the past two years because, you know, uh, I love it so much. I keep going back. Um, and then also with uh, this bilingual medical literacy magazine I'm starting, I'm working with an assistant historian or a historian here, uh, Professor Karen Huebner, and I'm truly working to sort of, sort of serve as a platform so that not only students, but individuals in the South LA area can better access medical resources. And our first topic is actually going to be on reproductive health, because that is such a pertinent theme. So that's sort of the big project that I'm working on community wise, and I'm very excited to release it this coming semester. So Wonderful. It's And it's so great to see that, you know, all of you have kind of made the experience your own in a sense that there isn't one cookie cutter way to get involved in, in giving back in a sense, right? And so this idea, again, of helping others is something that's so key and central to the health professions in general that I'm glad you've been able to explore that in many different ways. Um, the next question I want to pose to all of you was just about more about the academic experience. You know, I know that a lot of times students are really intimidated by the by challenging science coursework when they get to college, you know, and so thinking about the pre-health pathways, you know, there are so many challenging science courses that you really do have to take and, and hopefully excel in. So could you talk about, I guess, resources that are available if you need that extra help, especially in those challenging science courses and some of the ways in which you've been able to navigate that as students? Yeah, so I will talk a little bit about supplemental instruction here at USC. So it is actually a Dornsife program, just one of the reasons why Dornsife is so wonderful. Um, but it is funded by Dornsife, meaning that it is free for all students. And there is an SI leader for every course in Dornsife that has been deemed um, historically challenging. So examples could be um, the two general bio courses, the two gen chem courses, the o -chem courses, biochem, um, statistics, ALK, a lot of the physics courses, economics. Um, so all of these courses will have an SI leader sitting at the front of the class every week who takes the class with you. They've already taken the class though. Um, so they've done well and they connect with the professor. And so every week they work with the professor to create this worksheet um, and they give you extra practice problems, which is really amazing because when you're studying for a hard midterm, there's nothing better than extra practice problems. And they'll go through sessions with you um, and go over hard concepts and you can email them every question that you may have and they will answer every question that you have. So it's really cool too, because they're undergraduates um, just like you. So they're not scary and they're, they're I always loved all of my SI leaders, that's why I wanted to be an SI leader. I would email them after an exam being like, oh my God, I did not do the way that I wanted to, please tell me that I will be okay. And they were like, you're gonna be okay and you will be okay. So um, they're also just like such a good friend to you. And it's the reason why it these classes were so manageable. So you have the SI program. 
Yeah, I would definitely say huge shout out to SI, a huge resource that I feel like everyone really taps into. I personally used like for all those classes, um, definitely really helpful. I would also say in the pre-health office, we now have pre-health peer advising. So if you feel like you maybe don't, aren't, maybe you feel like your questions aren't super big, you don't want to reach out to one of our like official advisors, even though you should always feel open and welcome to reach out to them. Um, we have like undergrad peer advisors that, I mean, kind of like Ariane was saying, they've been through these courses, they've like done these experiences, they've been pre-health at USC for so long. And so they can really share their knowledge and inf information and like they've been trained, so they can give you really everything that you need to know. And then I feel like USC is very much community and support driven, like despite that kind of pre-med mindset of like, it's very competitive, like the classes are super difficult, even though the classes are a bit rigorous. Um, I would say really finding your group of people, like people that you can study with. And I feel like everyone is very much open to looking for those people, finding that group and like finding that group because everyone really wants to succeed and we all want each other to succeed as well. I feel like one of the biggest things is feeling like you're alone in that struggle. In reality, it's just about everybody in that classroom with you that feels confused and overwhelmed as well. So just reaching out, making those connections is really important as well. Uh, going off of what Dominic said, it definitely, uh, there's some times in class where a professor goes, Burr, 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 burr. and then everyone goes <sighs> and it's just a unanimous like sigh and so I definitely I sort of echoing off of what was previously said there are myriad of resources that are available to you from group me to slack because every class creates a group channel so you can simply go in and when you're texting 200 people you're saying hey does somebody want to study there's at least five people who are going to study with you. And that's how I met my study group. And then on top of that, there are a ton of organizations that actually set up study nights. So for instance, uh, I know Quest, which is uh, queers in STEM technology and mathematics. Yeah, STEM. Uh, they sometimes have study nights. So you can definitely also reach out to these uh, pre-health emphasis uh, organizations, and they'll always have uh, information, even just wisdom and SI leaders, as always phenomenal. You can go up to them be like, Hey, I'm struggling. I need some help. And they'll give you a whole checklist of things to do. So I've never really felt like I didn't have resources here. I've more so felt challenged just by the classes themselves, but it's really easy to get a hold of professors, students, and SI leaders alike. Great. You know, my last question, I actually just have one more. And then again, I do want to encourage our audience members to go ahead and submit questions via the Q&A box if you already have things you're wondering about. But I'm going to pose just one last question of my own. And I'm wondering, you know, can you have a normal life as a pre-health student at USC? So in other words, are there activities you've been able to engage in just for fun that have nothing to do with your health-related goals? Um, yes, I think that every single semester you have like a trial and error week or two where you're figuring out your schedule and how to balance everything and that's very normal. And I think when you start as a freshman it's a little bit longer right because you're, you're, you're just acclimating. Um, but I think you learn a lot about yourself and you learn a lot about what you can handle. Um, and I think the really cool thing is, is that once you have all of your classes down, you get to and they can be related or like Laura said, unrelated to your pre-health emphasis. And then like Tomas said, like they just offer like so many different events that you can attend and be a part of whether that night it's a spirit or service event, you know, it, it can change depending on what kind of organization you're in. Um, but I also think that you end up finding organizations that just kind of reflect the person that you want to be and want to do. So like I, um, I'm a trip guide for SC Outfitters. So we just take students um, around Southern California, California, other states on these really cool um, outdoor trips. And I mean, it's a lot of planning and it's a lot of work, but I think it just 
shows that like, okay, like I want to be the person that helps people get outside. So like you get to go on this trip and have so much fun, but at the same time, you're getting others to have fun. So there's like always multiple outlets, right? Like it's never just one thing. So I think it, it's easier than it seems because there are so many things that you can join. It just takes a little bit of adjusting. I would definitely like agree 100%. This is like, I feel like my favorite question to answer because I feel like everyone's like, oh, it's so scary to be pre-health, all this stuff. And honestly, like the things outside of pre-health is really what like drives you to like work even harder when you're like in school because you get to do all these things outside of it that like bring you joy. And like, I feel like no matter what you're trying to do, whether it's PT, dental, pre-med, anything like that, everyone's looking for very much like a well-rounded person. They wanna see what you're interested in, what you're passionate about, like of course within the health field, but outside of it as well. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I do cultural anthropology research, which is not my major, not my minor, nothing to do with the health field, but I think you know issues of systemic racism, things like that are something that I'm also super passionate about, advocacy, things like that environmental health, environmental science are totally things that are, of course, involved, but also can be very much not involved. Learning about soil sustainability is not always necessarily very much like a, a medical school thing. Um, and then, of course, like pursuing your own passions. I love to crochet. Sometimes I'll procrastinate and crochet a little bit too much. Always taking care, like I like to work out with my friends, go see movies, things like that. And of course, like if you end up coming to SC, you have the entire city, lots of food, lots of art, lots of culture to learn about and to explore. And I think undergrad is the time for you to really learn about who you are. So if you feel like you're a little confused, like go out there, pursue your interests. If you think you might be interested, join an org, ask questions, meet people. It's like totally a holistic experience. You don't just have to be pre-health. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, I would not enjoy pre-health if I was stuck in my room just studying all weekend. And so I like to make it a rule that, you know, I'll, of course, schedule my times, like maybe a good three hours every day, but that's all my homework. And then after that, close my laptop uh, and then just do something. So uh, sometimes I'll write poetry. Um, my roommate's a dancer. So we sometimes, he's been teaching me how to dance. That's fun. Um, and I'm glad that USC has the support and the resources to not only pigeonhole you as a med, like a pre-med student. Because when I came into college, I had that work mentality of, oh, I'm going to grind. I'm going to have 4.0. I'm not going to do anything. Just research, sleep, work. And to my surprise, it's nothing of the sort. If anything, I found that I was more successful in the classroom when I was able to exercise these other facets of my identity, whether it is through the arts or uh, physically, like I was on uh, the crew rowing team uh, the first year. So that was very nice. Um, yeah, I mean, and USC is known for this. Uh, work hard, play hard. Um, it definitely resonates with a lot of pre-health student stories as they talk about their interest or pursue something that isn't necessarily tied to pre-med. So we really encourage that here. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. You know, um, again, I do want to encourage um, everyone to be submitting questions via the Q&A box. We are going to be starting to take some of those questions now, but I also want to direct your attention to the answered tab within the Q&A box. Some of my colleagues have also been responding to some of your questions in that um, answered tab, so you may actually see some of your questions answered there. But um, one question I did want to take from, again, our audience is, um, first of all, um, one of our someone is saying that all of you are so brilliant and comforting and so so thank you all for being on this panel but um um one, um, one we have a student who's asking you know about the academic experience and so what is the classroom environment like and what's your favorite class been so far um i think that the classroom 
can be very fun. Um, I actually did really like the huge courses with like 100 to 200 people. Um, that's not always the case, um, but I found that it's actually pretty easy to end up going to office hours and just talk to that professor one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so I had a great time in those kinds of classes. Um, my favorite would be BISC 220, which was um, the cell biology and physiology. So you're going into the cell, but then you're also talking about physiology for the second half. And um, it was really cool because I took it the second semester of my freshman year. And it was the first class that I had taken where it felt like I was learning about the human body and um, how to apply a lot of the things that I learned already to the human body and what it means. So um, I had professor, um, Dr. Herrera, and he would ask us things like, if you get stabbed in this quadrant of the body, why is this system of the body going to fail? And it was just really exciting to me because it was like, okay, I just spent hours learning about this, but why does it matter? Um, so it was really cool. And a lot of people thought that class was challenging and it is, but at the same time, so many people liked it because it was the first time that they felt like they were actually learning what they were there for. I would definitely agree and say that like, especially in person, because my first year was online, um, the larger scale, like, like when I was taking organic chemistry, there's probably like uh, anywhere from 100 to 200 people in the lecture hall. But after I'd say a few months, you get to know a lot of the people in the class just because, like I said, like everyone is struggling through those through the problem sets, through the like the theory, like all of that stuff is, it's difficult, and so you get to know the, all those people and like getting to see them around campus, getting to talk to them in class, like you'll sit together in class after class until the next class comes, and they're like you need to leave, like we're and we're sitting in there talking to each other about the class, about life, about being pre health, being pre med, all those things. Um, I also really love the kind of smaller scale classes. I feel like. Just the opportunity to hear other students perspectives because I feel like USC has such a diverse population you learn a lot about different people's life stories that have influenced their perspectives um one of my favorite classes was one of the first environmental science classes I took which was on like water and soil sustainability and I felt like everyone in that class was just super passionate about the environment and we were doing projects about learning how to make USC's water like water use more sustainable like how can we re rework that what would the budget be it, would, it just very it very much felt like real world applications and especially working with the information that USC was giving us it very met it was just like a super cool opportunity so uh, I have a favorite stem class and then a favorite stem ish class uh, my favorite STEM class is probably the one I'm taking right now. It's not OCHEM. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, neurobiology, so it's BISC 420, I believe. And this is the first class that I've experienced. I'm also second year. Uh, that is neuroscience. It is brain, brain, and more brain. I mean, frontal lobe, uh, temporal lobe, all the lobes. Um, and it's really nice just to finally have that laser focus precision because I mean, we're going down to uh, the minutia. We're going into like blood, vessels in the brain and everything. So, and I, I've been wanting this for so long. So it's really nice to finally get into something that you've always been curious about and passionate about. So this, I guess, is you know, equitable to like the BISC 220 for Ariana. And my favorite non or STEM-ish class uh, would have to be uh, this class I'm taking at the Polymathic Institute, which is actually research-based and it's two credits over two semesters. So you take two this semester to the next and it's a year long commitment and you essentially just do a research project that has to do with LA. And so currently I'm research researching how uh, water pollution impacts uh, Latina maternity in the LA region. And so I really like how I've been able to incorporate other aspects of my identity and then really 
converge it onto a single research project as a first semester sophomore you know i i wouldn't think to myself oh i can do this this early but here i am so i'm very grateful for that and you get to learn about all the lobes <laughs> Um, we have a few questions from um, students who are asking about really what they want to know is, you know, what's the best major for someone to take on if they want to be pre-med, for example, or pre-health in general? And so um, is there a best, I guess? And so does anyone, I guess, want to take that on? Um, I would answer that there isn't a best major. I think that we stereotypically see students going into things like my major, human biology, biology, these sciencey majors, because they overlap with the medical school requirements that you need for medical school. But that does not mean that you can't take them anyways. Um, you can be an English major and still take the three medical requirements. Um, so it doesn't impact you whatsoever. Um, with that being said, if you go into your applications, um, not being so sure of what you want your major to be, um, USC is very supportive of you being able to change it sooner down the line. And because when you come in as a freshman, you're taking most of your GEs and these basic um, pre-med courses, they tend to overlap um, with what you have to do anyways. So it doesn't really feel like you're wasting time. So you do have a lot of flexibility, especially as soon as you begin. Um, the only time you don't really have flexibility is when you're like me in your last year. So you're, you're, you should be good to go. <laughs> I would like wholeheartedly agree. I think students and parents alike are often like really surprised when I tell them that like you can major in whatever you'd like as long as you get those prereqs done and you're involved in things like for yourself to prepare yourself to apply to any like graduate or like pre-professional professional school that you're looking for. My friends are business administration majors and they're pre-med so they come from accounting and then go to OCHEM so and I'm environmental science and health so that's very much like I would definitely encourage you to pursue whatever you're interested in. If you feel like you want to do creative writing, you want to do cinema, it may be a little bit different. It may be a little like unconventional, unorthodox, but like that's literally what USC is all about. We want to make sure that you can pursue all of your interests and still end up where you want to be at the end of your four years here. And I'd like to point out, I think that's the biggest part about being pre-med or pre-health is that um, you're choosing to go down this medical route. So you need to also make sure you're not doing it for some superficial like title or something else, some ulterior motive. And if that includes, you know, becoming a dance major and then also being pre-med, so be it, that's your path. But there definitely isn't a set course. Like no one's like, oh, you're human bio. Like, ah, that's terrible. Like, no, that, that doesn't exist here. Um, I think the biggest thing about specifically being pre-health in Dornsife is the ability to pursue intersectionality and really utilize all these different threads. So whether it's, for instance, doing research in environmental health and then going back and maybe writing or doing poetry, uh, if that's part of your narrative, if, that, if that's part of who you are, um, that's who you are going to bring into medicine, so. I love all of the things that you all have said. Um, you know, we have another question here that I, I think, you know, will be kind of, yeah, you know, a, a really good, you know, kind of catch up for some of the other things we've talked about here. You know, we've talked about so many different aspects of the pre-health experience. And so we have a student who's asking, what do you feel sets USC apart when we talk about, you know, being kind of a leader, you know, as far as um, a place that students can thrive or pre-health students can thrive? You know, what, what do you feel, I guess, if you had to boil it down, what is, what is the thing that makes us stand out? Um, personally, in my experience, it's just the support that um, I have on campus here. Um, I always, always, always have somebody to talk to, um, whether it is a pre-health advisor, um, peers that I look up to, SI leaders, or um, I'm not religious, but I get emails from the religious um, 
like a institution on campus every week and I read them because they put on like the best mindfulness events all of the time. They're like, come talk to us, we'll help you out. Um, there are like just like weekly counseling visits if you if you want to just talk to anybody a friend or an adult i mean there's just so much support left and right i have never felt alone this campus is massive but i have never felt alone like at all um even when i haven't seen my friends in a week like there's still somebody i can talk to so i think that's the biggest thing for me I would definitely say that support is like a huge thing that USC is big on, but because Ariana was so great in talking about that, I feel like something that USC is very unique to USC is flexibility. I feel like you can do so much here and like everyone is trying to make sure that you can do as much as possible in your time. You can change your major if you feel like that it's like just not fitting for you at all. If you and I feel like a lot of people are really scared to do those things because other universities make it really difficult for students to be able to change your interests and pursue what you'd like once you've kind of already started on that path. And I feel like USC makes that super accessible to students. Um, I'm a progressive degree student. So I will, I'm working to get my master's as well. I'm doing that in global medicine, but USC has so many of those programs in so many of their schools. You can do it in Marshall, you can do it in Viterbi, you can do it in gerontology, you can do it in so many different fields. And that is something that I feel like I've never seen at other universities. And then I feel like we're also, everyone is also like, please pursue your interests. I know that we've talked about that a lot, but it's like, we want you to be a full, well-rounded, passionate person. And it doesn't really matter what that is. It's, if it speaks to you, then pursue it. And I feel like that's something that's not super common in a lot of universities, especially in the pre-health field, which can, op which I guess is why everyone is often really scared and like worried to do those things. So yeah. I'm very grateful that USC is like flexible in that way. Uh, I'd like to highlight uh, USC's personality because I definitely feel as though every student here, uh, whether introverted or extroverted, they're willing to be like, you know what? Yeah, like, okay, like I'll hear you. And I think that sort of mentality also prevails when discussing with professors and um, staff. So I really find it uh, very encouraging to pursue medicine here just because I am able to uh, interact with so many different perspectives. And I'm not only looking at science or medicine, but rather it's a more holistic look at, okay, now that I know, for instance, how the world works what does what's medicine's role within this world that i envision or that i see and so i definitely view usc as that place to take advantage of every single opportunity because there are so many opportunities i mean you can i've had friends freshman year take on too much <clears throat> myself as well um freshman year and you're just like whoa this too much like it's amazing but it's too much so it the question shouldn't be like what's unique but rather like what do you want to do with all the resources that are here who are you when put in front of these opportunities resource research etc i know we've had a former ambassador tell us it's like being a kid in a candy store there's just so much to choose from in a sense um i know that ariana actually has to take off right now because she has a supplemental instruction session to lead and so we're going to say goodbye to ariana right now thank you so much ariana <laughs> but we do still have dominic and tomas with us and so um we, i actually have a question that relates to something that you've um talked about um we have a student who's asking about you know you both talked about some student organizations that you've gotten involved in and 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 back to Mas, I believe that you mentioned that you're starting a bilingual magazine. And so, um, you know, the question is, you know, how difficult is it to, you know, kind of, I guess, take your own idea, especially when it comes to student organizations or even a research project, whatever it is, how, how easy is it to come in with, with your own idea and kind of make it a reality? I can start. Uh, so it's really, really easy. However, you have to be 
passionate and driven and you need to put in the time and work because this isn't high school this isn't where you just say oh i'm gonna start a club and then the teacher does all the work or it's it's not really that organized no here there's rso's so registered student organizations so i pulled out the paperwork for that did that but then on top of that i've no one's been telling me no like everyone the only thing I've heard is, oh, what can I do to help you? Who can I lead you to? Uh, and that's how I got led to uh, Professor Karen Huebner, who's uh, a historian here. So I really feel encouraged. I mean, I'm only sophomore year, and then already all these things are sort of piling up. And I'm big into building momentum. So I really, you know, start from the bottom, build it up. So I feel it very... Uh, supported in this environment to do that. And then also research. I've had friends come in first semester. The moment they got accepted, they started uh, teach or like reaching out to professors and doctors and so on and so forth. They came in here with research. So alongside going to class, they were already receiving lab orientations. So, I mean, yet again, it's up to you. It's there. If you want it, grab it. If you don't, that is completely fine. Take your time. But I would like to reiterate that uh, high or it's not high school. Like college really wants you to bring out the best. We want to put something, a product into the world that is going to improve our environment, not something that's simply for a resume. So that's what I have to say about that. I'm just going to jump in to just to clarify something that Tomas said. Um, while yes, it is possible to get involved in research as a first semester freshman here at USC, it's probably not. It's not the norm, definitely. And it's um, I I know a lot of professors who will say that you know we want you because as Tomas mentioned, high school is very different from college. We really want you to get used to the academic life, the social life, you know, all of it and everything. Get used to being a college student before you jump into something as rigorous as research. So I just want to put a little caveat to, to what Tomas said. Again, we have so many undergraduate students who get involved in research while they're at USC, but usually they wait until perhaps there's maybe the summer before their sophomore year or even into their sophomore year to go ahead and do that when, when they have at least a year's worth of getting used to college under their belt. Um, I actually have one last question I want both of you to address. And so, um, you know, we have a lot of students here who are listening to this um, webinar, who are wanting to apply to USC, who, you know, are hoping to come here and be successful pre-health students. And so what advice would you give to prospective pre-health students at this um, stage in the game? Any advice that you can think of that you would want to pass along? Yeah, I, oh, sorry, I'm like frozen and an interesting like side eye, <laughs> I'm back. Uh, but I would definitely say that when I was applying to USC, I felt connected to it first. I don't like for some random reason, I don't know, it kind of just like felt right. But I would definitely say that USC is just looking for very passionate and like genuine people. If you feel like you have interests within specific fields, specific passions, like, you should be demonstrating your commitment to those things like now. So if, if you can get involved volunteering or working with the community, it doesn't even necessarily need to be shadowing a doctor. If you feel like you're connected to the Latinx community, maybe it's going to a community center, doing research there, or like volunteering there, tutoring students in that community. It's definitely just like making sure that you are like really backing up the values that you feel like you represent, the, the ones that you value. And then also, I feel like that kind of well-rounded kind of thing as well. So we love to see very passionate people that are looking to go into the medical field, but that's not the only thing that's you. Like you are a full, well-rounded person. And so while we do love and appreciate that, we definitely like to see who you are outside of that as well. Because I think, Tomas mentioned this, like that is definitely what is influencing you in your role in the health field. So we'd like to see the whole picture as opposed to just one little thing. Um, I definitely, one common characteristic that I see in every USC pre-health person is that they're passionate and they're authentic. 
they're they're driven by their passions and therefore they're here so i definitely encourage you uh like what i would say to myself if i were applying i'd be like be authentic be yourself there really is no formula because we all are different we all come from different places different stories different backgrounds and that's what makes usc so great so being able to reflect that while applying you know just sh- show us who you are and and then you'll be content with the result because you didn't lie you just came as you are Great. Thank you so much, Dominic and Tomas. And thank you to Ariana, who's not here. (laughs) Um, And thank all of you for joining us today and submitting your questions. I want to take just a minute to go over our application deadlines, um, which will be shown on the slide um, that will pop up right here. Um, USC has added a non-binding early action admission option for our first year or freshman applicants this year. So if you are planning to apply to a major in Dornsife or any other major that does not require an audition or an arts portfolio, And if you're interested in the early action option, or if you're interested in being considered for merit scholarships at USC, please select early action as your admission plan and submit your application by November 1st. If you're not interested in being considered for merit scholarships, apply by January 15th. For any transfer applicants in the audience, February 15th is your application deadline. Um, Finally, my colleague Nathan is putting our contact information in the chat and we'll move to the next slide with our contact information. Um, Please feel free to keep in touch with us, especially if we weren't able to get to your questions today. You can get in touch with our Dornsife ambassadors who are all current students like Ariana, Dominic and Tomas by using the ambassador link in the chat. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you've gotten something out of this um, webinar and, and we definitely hope to see you again soon. So have a great day and fight on.